everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Happy New Year. We've made it to a new year. It's 2024. I can't believe how fast time flies. One minute it's January, and the next it feels like December again. Do you feel that way? Why is that? Is it because we're busy? Is it that we're doing the same old thing every day and nothing seems to stand out? I don't know. If you're like me, You spend the last few days of December maybe not trying to figure out how to slow down time, but trying to figure out how to make every minute of it more enjoyable, more satisfying. Many times this comes in the form of a New Year's resolution, which is sort of a personal commitment to positive change in one's life. Sometimes that involves improvement goals for mental and physical health, maybe a change in habits or relationships. Perhaps it's pursuing personal development. Today, we'll talk about New Year's resolution statistics in the United States. But we'll do the first part of this lesson first, which is about an expression. In part one, you'll learn about the common English expression to get the ball rolling. As usual, we'll start with a joke. Are you ready? What was the snowman's resolution? Any ideas? To chill out. (laughs) All right, do you get it? The humor comes in the wordplay with chill, which has multiple meanings. To chill can mean to make cold. The other day, I bought sparkling water, also known as bubbly water, from the grocery store, and I chilled it in the fridge before drinking. I made it cold by leaving it in the fridge. I chilled it. To chill out, however, means relax, don't stress, take it easy. For example, when someone complains that they have too much work to do at work or school, you can say, chill out, you're going to be fine. Don't stress, it'll all work out in the end. Chill out. In this joke, the snowman's resolution is to chill out. Maybe he just wants to stay cold outside, or perhaps he wants to relax and not stress. Let's hear the joke one more time. What was the snowman's resolution? To chill out. Thinking about that, life must be really stressful as a snowman. Your life depends on the weather. Let's move on. Let's get the ball rolling and talk about the expression to get the ball rolling. We'll start by going through the definitions of the individual words. To get is a verb, which means to receive, obtain, or acquire something. For example, she managed to get the information she needed from the library. She obtained it. She found it. She discovered it. She received it. The is a definitive article and it refers to something already mentioned or known. Pass me the book on the table, please. Ball is a spherical object used in various games and sports. The children enjoy playing with soccer balls, footballs, and basketballs at the park. Rolling comes from to roll. It's the continuous motion or movement of something often forward. For example, his tennis ball kept rolling all the way down the hill. The phrase to get the ball rolling 
means to initiate or start an activity or process. You can actually think or imagine a game of pool. You know, pool, that green table with the colorful white and blue and purple and pink balls on it. Maybe not pink. It's called billiards in British English, or if you want to speak in a fancy way. In any case, in a game of pool, you literally need to hit one ball to start the game. You hit one ball towards that triangle shape of other balls, and they all disperse, and the game begins, right? So you need to get the ball rolling to begin. When someone suggests, let's get the ball rolling, they're proposing to start something or initiate an action to move forward with a project, plan, or activity. It means to set things in motion to kickstart an idea or a project, to get things started. Let's go through some examples. Example number one. So imagine you get engaged and you're getting married next year sometime. You don't have a venue or any details yet. And so your mom might ask you, what can we do to get the ball rolling? In other words, what can we do to initiate the planning process? How can we set things in motion? How can we get started? Perhaps meeting with a wedding planner would be an easy way to get the ball rolling. Example number two. Just this past week, we moved to our new home in North Carolina, which is a fixer-upper. It's a home that needs renovation. Now, we have plans to knock down a few walls in the house, raise the ceiling, among many other things. It's a huge project. Yesterday, I asked Lucas if he could call a few contractors to get the ball rolling, to kickstart our project, to start the renovations. Example number three. Imagine you are in middle school and your science teacher gives you a group project. You need to build a roller coaster that displays Newton's laws of motion. It's challenging. You not only need to buy this stuff and build it, you need to work with a team so it involves collaboration. Unfortunately, your team is disorganized. When your teacher asks you how your project is coming along, you can respond, well, it's taken a while to get the ball rolling. In other words, it's taken a bit of time to get this process started. It's taken a while to get the ball rolling. Hope that meaning is very clear. Let's go through the pronunciation exercise. We'll use the phrase, let's get the ball rolling. Repeat after me. Let's. Let's get. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's get the ball rolling. So sometimes you'll hear native speakers drop the G at the end of I-N-G words. So instead of saying rolling, you may hear rolling, rolling. Let's get the ball rolling. Now let's go through the conjugation now. Repeat after me. I usually get the ball rolling. You usually get the ball rolling. He usually gets the ball rolling. She usually gets the ball rolling. It usually gets the ball rolling. We usually get the ball rolling. They usually get the ball rolling. Now, I hope you enjoyed that pronunciation exercise. I do think it's important to pay attention to the subtle changes native speakers make in pronunciation. Not because I think you need to sound like a native English speaker when you're talking, 
That's 100% your choice. But being aware of subtleties in speech, such as removing the G on words that end in ing, can drastically improve your listening comprehension. Or shall I say, listening comprehension? Listening or listen in comprehension. Let me give you a few other examples. I'm moving to a new house and changing my phone number. Hear how I spoke clearly, enunciating each syllable? I'm moving to a new house and changing my phone number? If I increase the speed of that sentence, say I'm having a fast conversation with a friend, I'd probably say, I'm moving to a new house and changing my phone number. I'm moving to a new house and changing my phone number. All right. So in the second, you can hear how I reduced that ing sound on moving and changing. They turned to moving and changing. I'm moving to a new house and changing my phone number. If this reduction is new to you, chill out. (laughs) By no means do you need to eliminate all G's on words ending in ing. It's just a pronunciation tip that most definitely will help with comprehension. Pay attention to native speakers getting rid of the G on ing words. So that is it for this episode. I hope you had a lovely New Year's. And stay tuned for the next episode, which will be all about New Year's resolutions in the U.S. for 2024. Until then, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.